they flipped it on her because she didn't want to do it. They flipped it on her, and it just shows that they don't care. They just wanted to get him by any means necessary and take down anyone who wouldn't help by any means necessary. And so that was a lot. Um, and she, she just, she had nothing to do with anything. And they, she was incarcerated. She was defamed. Her name was defamed for things that she had, she had no knowledge of because she knew that nothing happened. Because she grew up with these girls as well. She was their same age and was with basically with them all the time, because that's how we were as a, as a community, which the brother said previously, we did basically everything together. Even though I didn't live in the community, I lived, my home was a community style type of living because we were all family and different people lived with us at different times. And so we were a family and we did everything together. The girls did everything together. The boys did everything together. And so, she knew that nothing happened. And so when she stated, well, you know, I'm not gonna say that, that's not true, that didn't happen, they flipped on her. And now she's in the situation that she's in now, which is very unfortunate. And so that is a gist of what I was introduced to and how I know about certain things, and I don't know. I'm sure things will come up later, but that's pretty basically what I have to say at this time. Thank you very much, Sister Fair. I think from seeing, I think from seeing what our initial two panelists even have to say, you can see how their stories were blocked by the government. This gives a whole lot been told until now, until we get a chance to have it on our own community forum, and we want to thank you both. Um, for all three of you, what would you say, could you give a little insight on kind of the mentality or character of the individuals who did go along with the conspiracy? What, would, what do you think would be a motivation or their kind of mindset? Well, the mindset, being raised in a community, basically, your condition to be your own person. In other words, you're not, you don't take in a lot of the outside world's indoctrination. You don't take in a lot of the indoctrination of, um, basically if you are exposed, it's what television, in, in other words, if you learn anything about the federal government, which shows how they were coerced and, and scared once they put themselves in a position, it's like the feds are on camera, on television, they don't lose. There's the SWAT teams, and you show cops, and there's all uh, these court cases where they win on a consistent basis. There's never the other side where if you um, if you fight and stand up for your rights, you can win as a person. You have rights. You have constitutional rights. There's laws that if you know them and work and work them in your favor, then you can come out of it. I'm saying that to say when you're raised in a community and you approach and you put us in a situation where federal government comes to you, the, the uh, dogma that oh, crap, the feds, they got us, there's no way out. They can do anything to us. And once they were placed in a position where they made the statements with Jacob York, pushed them in, into the office, if, if you notice, one of the star recant was star witnesses for the prosecution, she said that Jacob York took them to the, to the prosecutor. And they'd never been in a federal building. They were never incarcerated. They don't know their rights. They, a lot of us have never been locked up or placed. Until you see that, you don't know that there's a way out. So if you once you back your, once they were back in that position, they went to the office and they're sitting there with about five tamus and, and and the movie in their mind starts playing. This is where they catch us. This is where we break. This is where we get broke. This is where we get life in prison. And all those fears and emotions stir. And once they make the statement, they say, okay, because you made this statement, if you try to go back on it, which a lot of them right now they want to, but the fear that's the devil's tactic. That fear was placed in them that if they do, you're going to get five to ten years for perjury. And like like the, the, the law is saying, perjury is when they catch you in a lie. Now if you come forth and say, look, I lied. I'm recanting my story. I lied. 
I was I was tricked. They told me I know these things happen to you. They basically in a lot of the affidavits from the individuals now who the, the case is turning and is working on Dr. Malakazi York's behalf. They're saying that I was coerced when they came to me. I didn't know they had guns. They put guns on the table, handcuffs, and your face. You placed in a position. We can take you down now, or you can work on our behalf. And a lot of them were scared because they weren't. They they we weren't influenced or uh, taught or shown the other side of the law in reference to them failing. They're constantly pushing into society that once the feds got you, like, then it's over with. They're not coming to get their human beings, human beasts who fail all the time, but we give them their power. And that's what we have to make clear to the people who do want to come, those individuals, that they want to come back on their side and let them know that they, you do have rights. They, you know, it's loopholes through all, all throughout the case. So the mentality is just that. We're raising the community. A lot of them were naive to the things that were going on of the world. So when they jumped out there, there's a big world there, and there's no one to guide them except this devil, Jacob, who's saying, do this, do that. Do this, and that's their only form of security. You don't know anyone. Your family just, you know, they fell out of the grace of the Most High and dispersed anywhere, anywhere. So they just left to the wolves, and that's what happened. Um, I know, and not only with the naiveness of things, um, the crimes that are that the master teacher, Dr. Malachi York, is being accused of, are their crimes. You know. Um, if there their are crimes, uh, child molestation or pedophilia, or um, I know personally because she lived in my f prosecution witnesses was sleeping with my brother when they lived on the land. She was in her 20s, early 20s. He was 14, 15 years old, and I've seen and I saw them in my father's home come out of a locked bathroom. Why do you need to be in a bathroom with a 15-year-old if you're 25? So their, the crimes that they're accusing our master teacher of are the crimes that they commit. And so that is something that was being held against them from the federal government, from their perspective. is Okay, if you don't say that he did it, then because I have proof, I'm going to get you. And so... That is that was enough. That was another end outside of Jacob or Jacob growing up with them and the federal government coming to them. That was another end outside of that. The fact that you committed these crimes. I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to this person, and because you committed the crime, if you don't say that Malachi York did it, you're gonna get arrested for this crime. So we'll give you immunity, so that you won't. By saying that, yeah, I did it, I won't get in trouble. So the crimes they commit are the crimes that our master teacher are being is being wrongfully accused of. And so that's another aspect of the perspective of why they would do it. And I will be touching back on a conspiracy case. Um, I you when I was living in South Carolina. Um, I was very family oriented then. Um, they would come to my house for the summers. Whenever anybody needed a getaway, my house was like a vacation. Um, Fatima, Jacob, everybody would come. And Jacob, I went to Atlanta one time and I went to visit him after, after a trip from New York. It was a van full load of us. And Jacob, you know, kind of talked to me and he's like, you know, looking at the house, there was a lot of people at the house. Um, out of, um, everybody that pretty much went, you know, against him. And he pretty much came to me and, you know, like, Leah, I heard, um, you know, that Pops molested you. And I'm like, no, that's not true. Where'd you get that story from? Well, you know, of course, I already knew who told him. Looking at